Hello everybody and welcome to this video. Every Rock has a story. Today's story um, is about one of the largest rocks that I brought here. Most of the rocks in front of me are big enough that you could hold them in one hand and we'll be talking about all those rocks and earth materials as we go. But behind me I've got some really big rocks and today I'm going to tell you the story of the biggest rock that I've brought this one right here. It's so big I have to stand up to go over and grab it. So let me do that. It's very heavy. Here we are. So, this rock has a remarkable story. In fact, this is one of those rocks that has more than one story to it. But I want to focus on this part of the story. To tell the story, we have to close our eyes and imagine going back, back, 200 million years into the past. Now that seems like a long time to you and me, but actually, geologically, in terms of the entire age of the Earth, that's not too long. But it's long enough, 200 million years, to find us right at the beginning of an important time period called the Jurassic the Jurassic period of Earth history, some of you may have heard of that. And you may know that the Jurassic was a time when a certain kind of life was really starting to get going and really starting to dominate the lands. And that type of life, of course, was the dinosaurs. This rock tells the story of dinosaurs and I'm about to show you why. First, I have to describe the context where this rock came from. Now, I can tell this rock um, is very flat. It's actually very flat, and you might even be able to tell that. It looks big in this direction, but if I turn it like that, whoop, it's flat as a pancake. That's because this thing was created by mud, or fine grain sand at the Earth's surface, maybe in a, a lazy river or a mud flat or a stream. This one, the, the size of the individual particles of sands that are in here is very small. So this is probably an open mud flat or even like a swampy area with a muddy bottom. You could imagine that kind of place, the kind of place you wouldn't want to go walking with a new pair of shoes because they get all muddy. But what happens is that mud, that sandy mud, gets laid down in these thin layers, one layer after a time, and after a while it turns into stone. So the name of this rock, the first name we're going to give to this rock, is sandstone. This is sandstone. So it's made of little bits of mud and sand that got stuck together and turned into this this rock with these layers and these sort of flat she layers one on top of the other but I said this had something to do with dinosaurs how do you think I know that this has something to do with dinosaurs to show you I want to come a little bit closer I'm going to turn the rock around and I'm hoping you can see here that is a footprint there another footprint and there's another one it's the little claws base of the foot those claws those are real dinosaur footprints can you believe it so the story of this rock if you close your eyes and imagine going back 200 million years to a muddy, muddy flat. Right here in Massachusetts, where I live, there used to be a muddy flat and there were dinosaurs that would run all over. And this particular dinosaur ran across and left his footprints in the mud. And the sandstone solidified and froze in those footprints, those 200 million year old footprints right here for us to see. The dinosaur, if you could close your eyes and imagine. I don't have a picture of the dinosaur. We're not exactly sure what this dinosaur looked like because there's no bones or feet, just the footprints. 
but the dinosaur was probably 10 or 15 feet tall, 20 feet long, probably running on its back legs across this muddy flat, leaving those footprints. And the other name that has been given to these footprints left by dinosaurs is Eubrontes. Eubrontes. So these footprints are called Eubrontes footprints from some early Jurassic dinosaur with two feet that ran across this mudflat 200 million years ago. Now that is a story. And it's a story from this rock, this sedimentary rock, this sedimentary sandstone with traces of the dinosaurs, not actual bones, but traces of the dinosaurs in these footprints. We call this a trace fossil, these footprints. If you live in Massachusetts or Connecticut, there are parks you can go to to see these footprints when it's safe. And there's a museum in Connecticut you can also go to see some of these footprints preserved in the rock of the ground. That's my story for now. I hope you enjoyed learning about this sandstone and the story of dinosaurs. And remember, every rock has a story. Every one of these rocks has a story. And all you have to do to learn about that story is to ask, what is your story? I'll see you next time. Thank you.